Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing my December wrap up. Let's get going. I feel like I've been pretty good with December. And like here I have read more of audiobooks, but I still think I did a pretty decent amount of readings. Um, obviously I did some books I have not completed, but I still didn't think I did pretty well. Let's get going. So my first book is The Secret Keeper of Jane Fur by Alka jo Josie. This is the second book in the Jane Fur trilogy. And it's the spring of 1969 and Lakshima, now married to Dr. Jay Kuma, directs the healing garden in Shimla. Malik has finished his private school education. At 20, he has just been, met a young woman named Nimi when he leaves to apprentice at the facilities office of the Jane Fur Royal Palace. The latest project, a state-of-the-art cinema. Malik soon finds that not much has changed as he never gets the pink city of his childhood. Power and money still move seamlessly among the wealthy class and famous flow from Jane Poe's royal powers. But only if certain secrets remain buried, when the cinema's balcony tragically collapsed on opening night, blame is blamed, blame is placed where it is convenient. But Malik suspects something far darker and sets out to uncover the truth. As a former street child, he always knew to keep his own counsel. It's a lesson that will serve him as he untangles a web of lies. So I gave this book three stars. I kind of felt like a little flat, and the plot could have been more engaging. I did want to like more Malik since it was supposed to be his book, but it was more of Lakshima. I feel like there was way more Lakshima than Malik, so it can have been done without her in all honesty. But, um, it was as though, like, as I said, like, Shima was, like, the main character of the book, even though it wasn't supposed to be. I thought the way how they solved things was pretty quickly, like, they have this sudden mystery, and then all of a sudden, people get giving him information, and it was like, oh, that's so easy? Okay. <laughs> um, so, oh, it was just okay. It could have been better with better pacing and less characters. I think there was a lot more characters in this book than the first one, so it's kind of hard to, you know, just to keep up about who is who and what's happening. And I feel like that also with the um, point of view, I feel like there was a, uh, like a constant switch, but like it was just trying to do too much at once. We were following like maybe two storylines at once, so I did little, got a little bit confused. For the most part, but eventually it's like, okay, that kind of makes sense in a way. But, yeah, so it, but overall it just kind of have been better, but it wasn't my favorite one. My next book is Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones. Uh, and this is about two best friends start a true crime podcast, only to realize they may have helped a killer in the process. And I gave it a 3.5 stars. So the book was engaging at times, but then there was a time when things didn't really make sense. And there, sometimes they were just unbelievable. Like I didn't like the actions actions they would make were just a puzzle in the head. So like, are you sure that's how they would do things? So I didn't really like Cam. Oh my gosh, she was so annoying. She acted so brashly and naive. And I'm like, girl, calm down. You don't need to act that way. And she wrote things without people's permission, even though she has been constantly told not to do it. So obviously, calm is going to get her butt, which I'm glad it did, because what she did was just bizarre. So that's fun. And I never really liked her other one. I don't know if it was just a narrator or if it was just the audiobook, but... Cam's voice was so high pitched, it was really annoying to hear her all the time. Like with all the screaming and all that nonsense, I'm like, just stop screaming. It actually gave me a headache at the end of the day. So I'm like, okay, I think it's actually the narrator. I hate to say things like that, but the way how the narrator voice Cam was just so unbelievably annoying. I just really hated it. It was really frustrated with the voice, so. And honestly, the book was slow. It did start it off strong pretty well at the beginning, but then it just kind of felt flat. But honestly, I honestly feel like people were also telling information to them just like that, and, even though the, and the police couldn't solve the case, so. 
I don't know, things were really like, more well, like really, really easy for them to figure out certain things, so it, it, that took away the mystery of it. But it was just okay. Um, I did like the idea of, of like the podcast idea, but it was just okay. My next book is The Last Kingdom by Steve Berry, and this is uh, like the latest the Fallen Card in My Lord Adventure. And guess what? This is book number 17. Yay! Are we surprised? No. But, this is in which the discovery of a lost historical document challenges the global might of the United States. So, I give it three stars. I thought it was way too like a too many character and it was just dragging on for so long. I do like history, but I think the author was like putting everything all in one, so it was way too complicated for me to follow because of all the info dumping that the author had done. So yeah, it was just hard to follow. I, I did like the history lesson though, even though it, there was a lot of info dumping. I think the author did a, somewhat of a good job, but it was still a lot to take in. Uh, Carter was an interesting character, probably my favorite in this whole mess of series that I did. <laughs> Regardless, the receptors have like a jump from character to character. He like the author didn't really have like this nice flow. That, so he was just like okay, we're gonna end here, then here, then here. So it was just jumping throughout the book. Uh, it, and sometimes it would also have like incomplete sentences, but um, it was okay. So though the book was, as I said, number seventeen. So. Um, but again, if I read it, the, read it the first time of the book, I think my reading would maybe change, but as of now, it was okay, but I don't think I will have the heart in me to go and read number one, which is something called like the Templar or something like that, but yeah, I don't have too much stuff to say about this book, but it was just okay. I think it was kind of all over the mess, but yeah. So my next books I already talked about it, so I'm just going to quickly go over it. It's Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. So we're basically following a fireman named Guy Montag, and so we have what if fireman actually starts the burning, not save the fires. And that's what we're basically following throughout this book. And so basically, we, if you have a book, you're pretty much dead, and that is forbidden, so. That's why they're burning the books, and this is like a dystopia kind of uh, book, so yeah. It was a bad book, but it was certainly a weird one as well. The dialogue could have been better, and the things that were described in this book was confusing because of how things were worded. The start of the beginning was what pulled me in. It started something like it was a pleasure to burn. But I almost lost all focus. I think it's interesting how doing certain things can change you. And so, you know, you were once a fireman and then all of a sudden you're not. But uh, on the writing style was okay. It wasn't vivid as I thought it was, but the message was a little bit flat. I think the message could have been a little bit better. And But it does have a comparison to the real world and how we are living. I was also wondering what happened to Clevis. Uh, she was she actually deemed as dead, or they were just saying that she was dead? Because no one seemed to investigate her properly, so I feel like we never got a closure from her. Yeah, so that's what I have not to say. Um, um, I gave it three point five. I kind of like the weirdness of this book, but yeah. I j but overall, I didn't really know what to think of this book either. So yeah. So I don't have too much to talk about this book because we talked about it. But those are my thoughts. So my next book, or oh, it's actually more of a poetry, is *The Poet X* by Elizabeth Acevedo. So. In Giamata Basita feels and hard and unable to hide in her holiday neighborhood. Ever since her body grew into curves, she has learned to let she has learned to let her fist and fierceness do the talking. But Giamata has plenty of she wants to say, and she pours all her frustration and passion onto the pages of her letter notebook, reciting the words to herself like prayers, especially after she catches feelings for a boy in her bio class named Armand, 
who her family can never know about. I gave it a three stars. Uh, as I said, I'm not much into poetry, so I again I didn't really know how to uh, make this book. Um, but the f I feel like the first few pages of the book took a while for me to get into, but I think the author did a pretty good job. I as I um, but I think that the the relationship between X and Mommy was quite was a quite a powerful one. I I feel like seeing them not getting along until the end where I feel like there was somewhat a closure between the two. It was also interesting to see how X was questioning her religion and how she was raised by it. So I feel like we don't have a lot of characters who does that sort of thing so I really like how the author did that. So the book at times still felt flat and it couldn't really connect with X but I think I think like there should be more to her story. Just because she honestly does sound like a really interesting character, so I like how um, the author also showed her showed like the struggles of the character. But I know like the twin. I wish we had more of her twin. So X and her twin are twins. So I do like the twin. I think we have we should have gotten more about him, but we are focusing about X. But you know, I'm just a little side character death to the twin would have been nice. My next one is The Winter Garden by Alexandra Ball Bell. Welcome to the Winter Gardens of Half Moon House. Please do not mishandle the exhibits. The owners accept no liability for any events that are chaotical or otherwise. The Winter Garden opened at the stroke of midnight with no great fanfare. After all, this is a time when all virtuous folks should be in bed. But for the few curious soul that braved the opening of its gates, what enchantments await? There is a small manner of strange and spectacular flora and fauna collected on her travels by the scandalous Lady Beatrix Sitwell and examining the floor to the light of paying customers. By flickering lamp light, lizards can discover magic, fish, spectacular ghost butterflies, and a tiger made of stars. And for the very brave and a small extra cost, there is the forest of plum trees, ripening against the snow, bearing a magical flute, which can tell your fortune. If only you dare take a bite. I actually need enough this book because ever since after that that walk I had done, I didn't pick it up, so I just de enough it. But um, I gave it to two stars to three stars. So yeah, I'm just gonna really get into the book uh, that much. It started out really slow until halfway of the book itself. There are some things that doesn't make sense, like for the winter garden, it has magical aspects, but then it appears normal for the visitors, and it's, it's like magic normal in the real world because they don't seem really that phased by it. So I'm assuming magic is normal in the real world. So I, I guess magic is normal. I didn't really like the characters Beatrice and Rosa. Like they live in a world where um, they need to have husbands for like to have the reputation being good and all that. But they seem to be doing quite well without my husband. So that part doesn't really make sense to me. So I don't know what the author was trying to do in there. So the only consequences they ever had was some vague gossip that they had to deal with. But they honestly had seemed to have freedom. But yeah, so I only like James and the Spider Queen. The Spider Queen seems really intriguing. I wish we had gotten more of the Spider Queen. But she only appeared when they needed the winter garden the most, so but um yeah, I really liked the descriptions. I thought they were really beautiful. But so yeah, I I really like the descriptions, so yeah. <laughs> So my next book is City of Ghouls by Elizabeth Gilbert. In 1940, 19-year-old Vivian Waters has been just kicked out out of Vassar College, owing her to her lackluster freshman year performance. Her affluent parents sent her to Manhattan to live with her Aunt Peg, who owns a flamboyant Kremlin Mid Town Connolly Playhouse. There Vivian is introduced to an entire cosmos of unconventional and charismatic characters from the fun chasing show goes to a sexy male actor and grand dame actress Elaine Keller Ryder and no nonsense stage manager. 
While my memory makes a constant mistake that results in a professional scandal, it turns the new world upside down in ways that would take years to fully understand. The game is a four star, so it did remind me of The Seven Husbands of Emily Hugo, but I prefer this one it's all for that one. So I like how in the author of the story we got to see of the main character's life, Lillian's life, and how she navigates through the struggles of the ups and downs. I liked how the first part of the book showed like all the fun, bright, vivid, great moments before things got turned dark. I thought she did a really nice job of that. I think the biggest thing that kind of bummed me was how the Vivian was telling Angela. Angela has written a letter to Vivian because Angela wants to know who her father was. But the way how Vivian wrote the letter is like she literally said all about her sex and how she had orgasms and all that. So that was kind of disturbing. So like, I don't want to read a letter where someone is like literally telling you about how they passed their bait and all that stuff. So that really kind of weirded me out. So, so but one thing I wish the author did more was, was to actually go back to the question as to, as to what Angela has said, who was her father. Because we really didn't figure it out until like right at the end of the book, so yeah. In all honesty, I don't think the letter was actually needed. I felt it would have been fine regardless, with considering how the animation had went. So, and also, I don't know what happened to Eden. I think that was her name. She kind of had a, like a fight with Vivian, so she thinks she like she's all better than that because she's more upscale than Vivian, but. I don't know, I just never got an idea or closure as to what happened to Eden, so I wish we did, but yeah, it was still a fun read, I still liked it a lot. My next book is Mademoiselle Revolution by Zoe Sivak. We're following by Olga Hibas who escapes to Paris when a hygiene revolution burns across the island home, but as she walks her way into the inner circle of Robespierre and his mistress, she learns that not even oceans can stop the flames of revolution. I gave it three stars. I think this book was okay at first. It's, I seem to have like really enjoyed it, but then came too slow towards the part where they reach Paris, because right when at the St. Dominic, it was like really quick. Like it was just like, just like that, because obviously the author wanted us to get into Paris already. So, it just seemed to have really, really rushed compared to Paris since it had been dragging on the moment they had reached Paris. So, I didn't really like Celine's character. At first I did, but then the way how she treated Cornelie, because she went back and forth with Cornelie and Robert Spear, I didn't like that. She treated Cornelie like trash, so. I didn't really like that at all. Celine, so, you know, Celine so kept leaning her on. Also, when since when did someone became a assassination? Because there was this scene where a group, like a family, was being pulled away by the guards, but then Sylvie suddenly attacked two guards. She like really tackled them on. So she doesn't seem like the type of assassination. So like, when did those skills come from? I don't know. So that kind of seemed out of the blue. I really did like Gaspard. So I thought he was actually had like a really nice character growth. I, as I said before, I used to like Sylvie, but the thing she had done made me question. And like, how did she avoid the, the guillotine so many times? Like, the way, like, her actions she did, she just avoided the guillotine so, like, so many times. Honestly, I feel like the ending wasn't really an ending. It was just a satisfying relief that the characters are okay in the end and everyone is safe, so. I don't really like those endings, just because it just leaves more of a gap, but it was okay, the ending I guess. Next one is Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent, a former slave fighting for justice and reclusive boy who no longer believes it exists, and a dark pattern that will entangle the fates. I gave this I gave this a 2 stars and I think it left it an 87%. It wasn't that great. I the only thing I like about Tessana was how she was determined and how was driven she was. She knows what she wants and she's gonna go get it. She's not gonna back down from it. So I really like that about her. The thing that kind of irritated, the thing that kind of irritated was that the constant weeping about how she killed her master and her crying all of it. 
Like, yeah, I'm not getting into title about to kill him, but like, it's kind of annoying how she keeps repeating it and how she is doing it throughout the book, so that was somewhat of an irritating. And, uh, Max was a much better, and so also he keeps saying I kill people and I have no shame. The one thing I liked was like the natural relationship between Tassana and Max, but I still don't get why Tassana was crying over her master's, master's death when in the end she wants revenge, so I um, don't really get that part. Also, I don't really think, uh, like, there is a specific, I believe, it was like a magic system, I believe, um, that Fragment did, so it wasn't really properly explained. And also, how did Tissa not learn anything? She did all these trainings and she not learn any new skills and she was constantly being saved. So, honestly, it seemed like the training was pointless. And sometimes the writing itself, it would have really made sense. And like, sometimes about the lack of information about the politics, the, you know, behind the motivation also didn't really make sense. So, it was just a lack of everything. So, so I was just kind of really bored with it. And my next book is The Library of the Dead by Tia Hoju. When a child goes missing in the box, darkest streets, young Walker investigates. She will need to call in Zimbabwe and magic as well as college pragmatism to hunt down clues. But a shadow weapon when the hunter becomes the hunted. I gave it a 2.5. I didn't think it was that bad. It, it didn't it's a little bit too slow. I didn't turn the mystery aspect with the paranormal world and the modern, modern world that's mixed together. The atmosphere was great. I liked the eerie and the hauntings. I thought Lopa was okay. I didn't mind her and I liked her sass. And I thought her voice was unique. I wish we got more of the library, as that's what the synopsis said, and more of Edinburgh. Sometimes the plot would be too faced, but I would like to see more of the city to be more involved with the history and its beauty. So, so I think it was okay, but I would also prefer more of the world building. And my last book is Foul Heart Huntsman by Chloe Gong. Winter is drawing thick in 1932, Shanghai, and is the eminent threat of a Japanese invasion. It's an unreal and what assassin, and she faces to face her country and her love. So I gave it three stars, I was really disappointed by it. Um, it wasn't that great, there was a lot of mess. I didn't really enjoy much of the plot. I think there were some ones that were kind of like fillers and annoyed me since I was dragging too much. I didn't really like that point of view, so it was like sk skipping one person to the next to the next. And then it had chapters that were following each of the characters, so just one paragraph was a lead, the other was really so in the second, second paragraph, so that was kind of annoying. So I didn't think it was necessary to bring to certain people. I'm not gonna say who it is, but there were two certain people who were being bought in here, so I don't think it was necessary and only because they didn't really add much to the story itself. But the ending was suitable, I guess. It was, it didn't make sense to end the way how it was. But I did enjoy scenes with Fiamme and Celia. I liked how still as we still trying to figure out who the price was. Um, I liked the whole mystery behind that was. I kind of liked the twist as well. There were certain twists in the book as well. And that's all the books I have read. It was pretty good, even though a lot of them were audiobooks. But let me know what you have read in December. And please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time post. And I will see you in my next one.